Good afternoon. Um, so on your schedule it says I'm Jose Luis Vicente from Barcelona, but I'm not. Um, Jose Luis is a co-curator of the show, but sadly was unable to come today at very short notice, so I'm slightly improvising here. Um, I'm, I'm also, uh, I'm fairly sure I know less about data than anyone else here today, um, but I'm not going to apologize for that because the show that I'm about to tell you about is really aimed at people like me, people who know that there's a revolution going on in our culture, but people who only half understand both the history of it and where it's going. People like me who are not sure whether data is the new oil, a potentially boundless new source of wealth, or is it an ammunition for arms of mass surveillance, or is it an instrument for knowledge, prevention, efficiency, and transparency, as we've just been hearing about. So Big Bang Data is a major new exhibition at Somerset House that explores the phenomenon of the data explosion and how it's radically changing our society and culture. Crucially, most of the content of the show is created by artists and designers, so it's very much a cultural perspective on the issue. And in the show, in total, there are about 75 artworks and objects. So it focuses on the exponential growth of data in the last five years. It examines the way data is organized, used, and interpreted, and the huge questions that it poses for our world. And as well as explaining current state-of-the-art systems in data collection and surveillance, the exhibition places the subject in an historical trajectory, presenting a wide variety of art and data visualization, projects that aim to make the subject and the issues it raises transparent, compelling, and I think really importantly, transplant transplanting the subject onto a human scale. As I mentioned, the show was co-curated by Jose Luis Vicente and with Olga Subiros, and it was first seen at the Center for Contemporary Culture in Barcelona just over a year ago. Um, and this is an adapted version of the show. So it's at Somerset House, it opens on the 3rd of December and it runs for about three months. I've run Somerset House for just over a year now and I think it's the perfect place for a show like this because it's a show that doesn't really fit any easy category given that it crosses art, design, science, technology, social history. It's also a good location because we have many residents who work at Somerset House who are interested in working at the intersection of arts and technology. Big data is sometimes seen as a niche issue, but of course the reason we're doing this show is it's very much the opposite. So the first piece the audience see is Thompson and Craighead's London Wall. I think we get to meet them this afternoon. Um, this piece, which is early on in the show, uh, is by Ryoji Ikeda, a uh, Japanese artist, and it tackles the infinite scale of the world's data. It immerses the audience, you can see on the right-hand side, in data. And he invites you to experience the universe of data that exists in the infinite space between zero and one. And every point in this vast sea of pixels has been strictly calculated by math math mathematical formulae. The first chapter in the show, The Weight of the Cloud, um, it shows how our digital information still has a very physical presence somewhere in the world. This is an, a still from a film by the artist Timo Arnal. It shows how the cloud is probably the most deceptive metaphor ever coined. There's nothing light or intangible about it. Um, other works in this section include the telegeography map, redesigned by the designer of the exhibition, Morag Maisko, which details the world's submarine cable systems and their landing, landing stations. Um, and we've also got uh, submarine communication cables from 1896 up to the present day. And specially commissioned for the show, Dan Williams is working on a new version of Ingrid Barrington's Field Guide, which is an investigation of the network infrastructures around Somerset House, which will be produced one week during this month. And the map offers an overview of some of the easily overlooked elements of the internet that can be found on our streets. Data Universe, um, the second section. So it studies the history of data and highlights the landmarks of the, of the Big Bang of data. So in 2002, digital technology surpassed analog technology. And in one year, 2009, I'm sure as many of you know, we produced the same quantity of data as we had in the entire history of humanity up to that point. It also, so the section charts the evolution of data storage devices from punch cards up to the present day. 
and has one of the earliest examples from 1999 of data visualization by Lisa Jev Jevbrat. Uh, it also includes another piece by Thomas, Thompson and Craighead, Their Horizon, which is a narrative clock made of real-time images from webcams from all over the world. This image is of the Rosetta disk. Um, it's a digital archive of the world's languages. It contains 13,000 pages of information in over 1,500 human languages. Each page is 400 microns across. It has to be read through a microscope. And the idea is that this will last for thousands of years. A key part of the exhibition, which we've specially commissioned, is something we're calling the London Situation Room. It'll be one of the highlights. It has three elements to it. I think you met earlier uh, Usman Hack. His umbrellium think project called Thinkful um, is in the London Situation Room. And we've created two new pieces, um, two new interactive works that transfer numbers into narratives. The data generated and gathered around the city will tell the stories of Londoners and their daily lives. So this is a, an image of a new piece by Tekia, which will, will visualize the pulse and frequency of live data streams from Twitter, Instagram, and Transport for London to show what everyday Londoners are feeling, seeing, and how they're moving around the capital. And secondly, the second new piece, Future Cities Catapult, um, are creating a new interactive exhibit that will envisage London in 2035, and it will show how data can help to plan for the future, and that's a th obviously a big theme of today. Based on real data about London, it enables visitors to, to do their own data modeling of, of London in 2035. Now, obviously, we all know about the sinister side of data, um, and we read about it in our news, newspapers every day. So in this section, a number of artists shine a spotlight on that darker side of data. Uh, this is a piece, um, James Bridle. I'm not going to read out the title. Um, so in 2011, as many of you will know, IT researchers discovered that the iPhone stores information about its location history. So what James Bridle did was he extracted the data from his iPhone, and he created this book of maps, which shows where he went over a year, 202 maps. Many places that he visited, but also because of errors in the system, lots of places that he hadn't visited, which is intriguing. There's also a piece in this section called Selfie City by Moritz Stefaner and Lev Manovich, who've looked at, at the style of selfies in different cities across the world and discovered different styles um, and sort of cultures of, of selfies. Um, and of course, as we all know, cat sell. Um, Owen Mundy's I Know Where Your Cat Lives. So it's a data experiment where he took uh, information, social media information, and uploaded photographs of people's cats from across the world and managed to cross-reference them. So you can navigate a map of the world, hone in on any street, and you will see pictures of the cat, the cats that live in those streets. So in the year after he did this, he uploaded a million cats in the first phase. Um, and after a year, only 14% of the original photos were still live with coordinates, showing that, in fact, his project had, had shown people that their privacy and geotagging settings needed to be changed. Uh, and this week, I'm very happy to say he's uploaded millions of more cats, especially for the Somerset House show. Um, of course, as we near the end of the show, we move from the more dystopian view of data towards the utopian view. Um, this is Florence Nightingale's 1858 diagram of the causes of mortality in the army in the east. We also have an original of John Snow's map of cholera and water pumps from Soho and Brooke's slave ship diagram from 1788. Um, and a raft of new projects like the Descent project with Nesta, which is about open democracy, and in fact projects similar to the ones we've just been hearing about with the Indigo Trust, about democracy, about climate change, about um, migration, and about housing. Uh, many wonderful projects that show how data can work for the common good. 
Um, and nearing the end, Jonathan Harris's man manifesto about the positive and negative possibilities of data, um, where he suggests that the old decision-making tools such as wisdom, morality, and personal experience mustn't be lost as we think about data and the exciting possibilities of it. And Black Shoals, um, a newly commissioned of a piece by Joshua Portway and Lisa, Lisa Autogena, which is an immersive work that represents real-time stock market activity as the night sky, and it's a constantly changing um, planetarium of, of live financial data. And of course, no great exhibition is the same without a shop. So we've got, possibly, I don't know, someone can tell me, is this the first shop full of only big data products? Um, at the bottom, we have specially knitted jumpers, which have been manufactured, designed and manufactured at Somerset House, which will have a big data theme. Uh, personal genome services, sinister biohacks that obfuscate your DNA, laser-cut jewelry that memorizes your personal geographies more and more. Anyway, we very much um, hope to see you um, in December. Thank you.